Now, this closely watched polls will impact the future of Taiwan's independence and China has been accused of attempts to influence voters to pick candidates who favor reunification. The acquisitions include military threats, diplomatic pressure, fake news and financial lures. And deep fakes to social media videos are increasingly being reported, especially on the Chinese-owned video platform TikTok. They are aimed at DPP candidate Lai ching who backs Taiwan's independence. Experts and Taiwanese officials alike have linked this wave of disinformation to Beijing. China is interfering in Taiwan's elections using many platforms developed with advanced technology such as Doin or TikTok, which the Taiwan government is worried about. In addition, China is also using artificial intelligence to conduct cognitive warfare against Taiwan. Now, one such fraudulent video emerged in November, where it showed Lai speaking to the press with the audio altered to make it sound like he was praising his Beijing-friendly opponents. Taiwanese authorities took the video down and described it as an attempt to influence voters. Now, Taiwan's Mainland Affairs Council, which oversees relations with China, has warned that China is using both economic and political means to impact the vote. In response to the Chinese Communist authorities' repeated use of various means to intervene in Taiwan's elections in an attempt to influence voters, the Mainland Affairs Council severely condemned the Chinese Communist authorities. We advise China to stop using ineffective means and stop harming cross-trade relations. And now to discuss this further, we have with us Dr. Srikanth Kondapalli joining us live from New Delhi. He's a professor of China studies at Jawaharlal Nehru University. Welcome to the broadcast, Professor. Thank you. I'd like to begin with my first question here. Now, before the people of Taiwan hit the polling stations, Professor, this morning, they faced a wave of disinformation that is being viewed as a Chinese strategy to influence voters. How big do you think of a factor that is in this election? Oh, that is a big factor since 1996 uh, elections when the president post has been made uh, for the public uh, to vote. Uh, at that time, China launched uh, missiles uh, into the northeast of Taiwan and southwest of Taiwan to intimidate the electorate. Uh, now, uh, subsequently, they have learned some lessons on not directly interfering, but uh, at the moment, they are trying to uh, do influence operations by uh, controlling the media uh, coverage, uh, by influencing the electorate, by um, indirect uh, threats, uh, not direct as we saw in 94, 95. Uh, and also in terms of the mobilization since last August, uh, since 2022 August, when they launched a series of military exercises uh, after the uh, the visit by the U.S. Uh, leader. Um, uh, uh, so there is a huge um, trust by the PLA and as well as by the political establishment in China. Wang Huning, uh, one of the fourth ranking Politburo Standing Committee member, has been nominated to look after the Taiwan-related issues. Uh, he wrote a book on neo-authoritarianism uh, and against the democracies. So you could see the configurations building up at the political level, military level, as well as in terms of uh, uh, propaganda and influence operations. And Professor, given Taiwan's strategic location, if we see a conflict in the area, it could disrupt global trade and with a direct impact on India as well. So how is New Delhi watching this high-stakes election? Uh, soon after Nancy Pelosi's visit in uh, August 2022, the Government of India, Ministry of External Affairs, uh, had cautioned about the uh, increase in the military exercises and possible disruption that it may cause for the sea lanes of communications as well as for the global trade passing through Taiwan. India has uh, a lot of trade in this region. Uh, something like 45% of its trade passes through Taiwan Straits and South China Sea. 
uh, and uh, also there is uh, increasing uh, FDI, foreign direct investment linkages, in addition to people to people contacts. Uh, in any case of disruption in the Taiwan Straits uh, with the PLA invasion scenarios, uh, there would be consequences for the India rise in terms of trade, investments, people-to-people -people contacts, and other strategic interests in this region. And hence, the MEA had cautioned about the, the possible invasion scenarios and suggested to ushering peace and stability. Uh, and uh, as a part of the Quad and Indo-Pacific developments in which India has been actively participating, this is one of the issues that they are discussing in terms of uh, possible invasion scenarios and what should the other countries do in this regard. So there is a uh, circumspect uh, position that yes. India had taken on the Taiwan Straits. And also, Professor, now India is concerned about China's growing hegemony in the Asia-Pacific as well and keeping in view that two of the three candidates in today's election are viewed as a pro-Beijing. Do you think that this is also sort of uh, contentious at the moment? While the uh, DPP candidate, uh, Lai, Mr. Lai, uh, is said to be pro-independence, the DPP has not taken any measure towards the independence of Taiwan. Uh, while Kuomintang candidate, uh, Mr. Hou, the uh, Taipei mayor, new Taipei mayor, uh, is said to be pro-China, pro-unification with China. Nevertheless, they have not taken any position which is closer to uh, China, in, uh, except for uh, suggesting that they should have more close economic contacts and so on and so forth. The TPP candidate as well has not taken any position which is uh, explicitly pro-China. That is because the electorate in Taiwan are seeking status quo. Something like 58% of the electorate in Taiwan, they want status quo, they do not want a war. Uh, and so uh, all the three contenders need to consider the public opinion and so they have taken a position which is pro-Taiwan in orientation rather than pro-China in orientation. Mm. So across the political spectrum, there is a certain uh, bottom line in which they have to operate. Uh, Kuomintang seen as pro-reunification party, yet it has taken no measure which is pro-China in, except during President Ma in Chu's term when they had the ECFA agreement economic cooperation framework agreement for closer ties. They have also had the CBMs, confidence building measures in the maritime domain uh, in order to douse the PLA Navy uh, activities. Nevertheless, they have also taken a no war, no reunification, no military use position, the three no's yes. that they have mentioned. So in other words, there is uh, a uh, consideration by the political contenders that yes. Taiwan's electorate position should be taken into consideration. Thank you, Professor, for joining us and giving us and sharing your insights in such detail. Thank you for joining in. Thank you.